In today's video, we're going to be testing a handful of overclock speeds for the Sega Genesis Model 1 and determining which is best for your console and the consoles I mod in the future. Overclocking the Sega Genesis has been one of the go-to Sega mods for quite some time now. Overclocking itself helps graphically taxing games run smoother and achieve what appears to be higher frame rates. While the 10 MHz chip is the go-to clock speed, I wanted to determine why for myself. I set out with a simple idea in mind and figured it would be fairly easy to get an objective result. I took a trip to a local electronic parts store and loaded up on a wide range of 5 volt oscillators. The standard clock runs at 7.68 MHz, so I opted not to go with an 8 MHz clock speed because it was too close, and decided instead to go with a 9 MHz to start with. From there, I went from 9 to 9.6, I have a 10, a 10.752, an 11, 11.6, a 12, 12.5, 13, and then finally a 16 MHz chip. Spoiler alert! All the clock speeds above 10.752 in my testing were a mess. The gameplay of all the games that I tested were either filled with major glitches, if not immediately crashing the game. This didn't prove to be the biggest challenge in making this video though. I found it extremely hard capturing footage that reflected my experience while playing the games. Yes, I had hours of gameplay footage at different clock speeds that I could compare side by side, but this didn't seem to be telling the whole story. In an attempt to salvage some useful bits from my hours of gameplay, I narrowed it down to a handful of games and genres to help illustrate my findings. We're going to start with side scrollers, and for this I picked two main titles. We're going to start with Mickey Castle of Illusions. In my experience, Mickey ran about the same whether in standard clock, a 9 or a 9.6 MHz overclock. Visually, it didn't have any big differences, and it didn't feel any snappier in gameplay. It did, however, crumble to bits at a 10 MHz overclock. It definitely had to have been one of the games that benefited the least from actually having an overclock. I'm really guessing because it's not a visually complex game, it was probably just optimized to run on a slower clock speed anyways. Second, let's look at Sonic 2. Sonic 2, like Mickey, didn't see any big differences visually. It did, however, feel snappier the closer we got to the 10 MHz mark. The game played the best at 10 MHz, however, at 10.752, pushed it over the edge and made the game unplayable. This is really the side scroller that stood out from the rest, and I really think it had to do with the visual complexities of the game as well as the speed of gameplay. While I didn't test any other Sonic games, I was convinced that they would have played exactly the same. Next up, let's discuss fighting games, and for this we'll check out Tournament Fighters. Again, visually, there wasn't a huge difference in glitches or frame rates, but there was a lot to be said for the response acceleration towards 10 MHz chip. The game felt like it was much more responsive at 10 MHz, but again crashed hard at the 10.752 MHz. This chalks up another game that really seemed to hit the 10 MHz sweet spot and really gained a lot over the stock speed. For all the same reasons that Sonic saw a boost, I'm sure this genre will see the same. Next is racing games, and for this one I chose Road Rash 3. Visually, it seemed to achieve higher frame rates the closer we got to 10 MHz. The game is one of the only games that I captured that seemed to tell the story of how much smoother it played. It really felt responsive at 10 MHz, but again failed to edge past 10. At 10.752, the game crashed immediately. Again, it seems to be enveloped in this 10 MHz sweet spot that the others have, and really the same results carried through the genre. Finally, the genre that really seemed to benefit from the overclock was beat-em-ups. The most prominent results that I saw was from the game Maximum Carnage. The game itself played better the closer we edged to 10.752 MHz. It became far more responsive and visually felt like it kept up much better. This is very apparent when looking at the opening scene. While 7.68, a 9, and 9.6 MHz clocks seem to be dropping visuals, 10 and 10.752 clock speeds seem to recapture the missing visuals. In this example, Spider-Man seems to be missing while swinging when run at a lower clock speed, but reappears like he should when the clock speed is overclocked to 10 or even 10.752. My suspicion is that this might be the case for a bunch of games in the Genesis library. While Sega chose to implement a 7.68 clock speed, I think some games really worked better at higher clock speeds but had no choice but to run on a slower clock speed. 
While I really hoped in basking in the glory of having a competently overclocked 16 megahertz of a beast Sega Genesis, it just wasn't in the cards. It's not as sexy, but sometimes the best options are the ones that most people agree upon in the first place. The truth is though, if you're into beat-em-ups, fighters, or even racing games, you're gonna benefit from the 10 megahertz overclock. It's a happy medium that yields the best results graphically while having the least amount of graphical issues. However, in an effort to achieve clock speed dominance, stay tuned to my channel for part two where we push the boundaries of the Model 2. Keep posted on my channel for more mods and repairs, and remember, a like and subscribe are always appreciated. Thanks again for your support, and we will catch you guys later.